experimental uh, lightweight camper that can be hauled by anybody. And you're hauling it with a Mini Cooper. And a newer one with a three-cylinder engine. A three-cylinder engine. Turbo. Uh, turbo. Well, that does help a lot. Uh, and it tow tows this trailer pretty easily. Yes. In fact, actually, when we were coming through Flagstaff, coming up the hills before we got here, uh, I was doing 65 up the hills and fourth. And there's some pretty big hills. Yeah, it was cranking. Now, it seemed like it was an excited bug going up the hill. You know, it was huh. like, but it was doing it. Good, good, good. <laughs> and have you weighed the trailer? Yes, absolutely. The... Uh, um, because it's lighter than 2,000 pounds, uh, the, the vehicle together with the trailer is 3980. The, the Mini Cooper and the trailer? It's 3980. Wow. And that's curb weight with everything without the cargo. And so, and that's well under the GVCW of the, of the car. So make a long story short, the, the trailer is only 1,200 pounds. Wow, that's amazing. Now, and that's with all the additions without, um, if it didn't have any any of the special things on it, it would be 650 pounds. So, folks, we've uh, <laughs> we're trying to stop every time a car goes by, and that's just taking us. We're going to be here all the day, uh, and we're still going to get road noise. So, what we're going to do is go inside and uh, finish talking inside. So, let's go inside and and see this great trailer. Okay, let's do that. So, what what inspired you to build the trailer? Uh, you. Yeah, okay. And not just you, but I started thinking that not only I mean because you're you're creating a lot of popularity. Uh, and I don't necessarily think it's just that it's a that it's a that it's a fad. I think it's actually the way America is going. I think so too. And so I started thinking that there's a real need for it. But I'm getting ready to retire as a mechanic, and I've been a mechanic all my life. And I started thinking, uh, I really love puzzles, and this the whole concept of a boondocking vehicle is an is an incredible puzzle. So that's why I started working. It's, so it's, it's been a great mind thinking puzzle, and that's why I built it. So. And so you're actually thinking about building it commercially for other people. Uh, I've had such popularity with looking at it that I've actually started a business with it. Any idea how much uh, a trailer will cost? It, it'll be about $10,000 depending on uh, all the additions. On, on the trailer we're in now. Right, exactly. Right. And so far I've had a lot of people really leery of it because it's a private, right now it's a private, you know, they're like, that's a lot of money. But when you look at campers and how much they cost for things of this size that have what it has, they're not even available. So it's kind of, it's like a Mini Cooper. What do you compare it to? Right. <laughs> you know, like uh, the, the solar, you, nobody puts integrated solar into everything. And even when I talked to Renogy, I had an interesting talk with Renogy to try to get them without the frame so I can install them like windows. You know what I mean? Instead of actually having frames, just, just glue them right to the frame. And they're looking at me like I'm insane. And that's the best way to install solar. Uh, these actually lights are about, they take 30 watts and you can get them up to about 20 feet long. So they're excellent for campers and, and vans. And they're DC or you can run them in AC. Oh wow, very nice. And it's great light in here. Yeah, you can get them in strip light. And the cool thing is you can get them at uh, 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 Home Depot for, for recessed cabinet lighting. And they're only like 30 bucks for 20 feet of it. So if you imagine, you can cut it into one foot chunks and actually put it anywhere, in, you know, like if you need... It's a really nice, cheap way of making lighting anywhere in a camper. And so I put them in here because they just look really darling in the, that kind of a channel. This is all composite. The walls are all foam, R7. It, aluminum, are they aluminum out on the outside? Aluminum, but this is all foam. Oh, okay, yeah. This is all foam. This is all foam. Looks really nice. Right, and the, the, the ceiling's all integrated foam and it's steel, steel framed uh, 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 body. It's, all, it's a huge roll cage. And the batteries are under here, and it's got 320 amp hours sitting in here, and all little. It's got eight little U1 batteries sitting under here, and it's all run off a, a 110 AC. And uh, how much solar did you have? 400 watts. 400 watts. 400 watts. And because of the weird, the, some of the videos that you had, I actually incorporated both the mono and the polys. So it's got a, a mono on the top and three polys for each side. So what you can do is you can set the 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 camper in the right direction of the sun and it should actually track and you get an even amount of power all through the day. Mm -hmm. And it's got a sunroof. Oh, I love that. In, this, in the winter, it'd be probably too hot in the summer, but in the winter, it'd be amazing. Yeah, it's great. And those are windows. Those actually pop open as windows. Because you have solar on the top, you have four fans on the corners that are actually less than one amp for all four so you can run them all day long. I have actually two PWM controllers running them. Right? Right. But they're in they're in parallel. They're connected. 
because PWM controllers run like a switch, right? So they're connected in parallel, so they're like two blinking light bulbs, so they can actually work similar to a MPPT controller when they're linked. They actually give more power because they're actually a faster switch than one PWM controller. So you get more power out of them, but it means they have to have a different style of battery, which is why I have uh, uh, universal batteries as opposed to uh, glass mat or gel. What are they made of then? They're, 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 ca they're the calcium batteries. They're, um, you, you have your basic, like a car battery, right? Then right. you have like a lawnmower utility battery. That's exactly what they are. They go for like lawnmowers and things like that. They're UNR batteries. It's like what you would find in a wheelchair. But I had eight of them. And they're in line. And the reason why I have eight of them is because you can, they have, uh, you can charge them up to 15.6 volts. And they'll go down to 10.5 and, a half and you, can't, you, you can get as low as 10.5 without damaging them. Hmm. So what I'm saying is, is that, see, because the optimum voltage is around 17 volts for, for a solar panel. Right. So you can put that right to 15, and if you're low on charge, you can actually push it all the way up to 15 and soak the batteries and get more juice without damaging them. Mm -hmm. That's why I have universal batteries. All the, uh, the composite walls is going to keep your weight down, which is how a big trailer like this can be 1,200 pounds. Right. So here's where you keep your toilet. See? Yeah. You got a regular toilet there. Of course, you got a regular fridge. This, the Arctic King's got a knockoff compressor of the one that you were showing that you actually have online. Mm -hmm. But it's got a knockoff compressor, so see? Plain old fridge, but it's all 110. So it is 110, right. The whole camper is 110. Right. Now, let me, um, if, uh... Microwave. Check this out. Fans, right? Oh, nice. Both of them close up, so you can close up your fans. Most everybody in the campers, in your in the vans, they have this one side bench, and this is a really cool idea, right? Mm -hmm. So, came up with this foldable leaflet style, and this is all aluminum table. Right. Um, then you got the fold out leaflets. Okay. Very sweet idea there. See, in that way, so like if you have somebody here, you can actually cook here, and then have somebody over there, and there's another leaflet on the other on one. On the other end. Right. From your suggestions, I bought a buddy heater, mm -hmm. and it has worked really well. I, I have noticed the issues that you were talking about. It's, it's actually because they have a cheap version of the uh, the pilot light nozzle. That's where it usually goes bad. Right, it is. And I noticed that I fixed mine. That is a SureCall style uh, uh, Wi-Fi booster. Oh, uh-huh. And the interesting thing about this one is that it's got the one with the dial. It's only like $309. It's cheaper than the WeBoost, right? But you can adjust out the frequencies that you don't need. And on the outside that you can't see, it's got a 17-foot antenna that's built into the wall. So when you look at it, it's got a thing like this, but you can actually push it up 17 feet. Oh, wow. And then you've got the regular door space like the... See, see, right. see, check it out. The thing to keep in mind is that this is all foam. Right. Now check this out. You know how they always, always get moldy and stuff, like the seats? Right. They're all aluminum backed uh, foam and uh, uh, memory foam. So these are, are watertight, airtight, made out of Naga hide. So you can use them for flotation devices. <laughs> if you ever get in the water. And since they're made out of the marine grade uh, Naga hide, they won't mold. The way that this works is that this is actually a slide out. Ah. And it slides out to here. And those two come over here and it's, it makes all the way to a bed to here. And so this other one slides out as well. It comes out completely. Now, the reason why it comes out completely is because you can take the top one, right, make it a bed, but you can also take this one out. And so, if you're like heavy boondocking and you're all by yourself, you can actually bolt stuff down and use that completely for storage on the front end of the, of the camp. Instead of putting a bumper on it, I made that out of the back end. Mm -hmm. And I use these things called water bricks instead of instead of regular water. They're actually, you know, the uh, survivalist. Uh, water bricks, uh -huh. except for you can put them in cassette form in the back. You can hold four of them and they slide in. Good idea. So, and since you can have different kinds, you can have water, ammo, food. So you got the four of them and they work as ballast on the back end of the camper. Right, so your, ter your tongue weight. Right, so you can actually add, add more in the front storage. Right. There's your batteries. Right, that's great having that kind of access. Well, this is a 2,000 watt inverter and all eight batteries slide out. 
so you can actually push them in one at a time and that way they're exterior vented and you can get up to you can actually put 10 in there and you don't have any problems with your batteries and they're complete so that you got more room for everything else inside the camp adjustable suspension in case you want to really go off-road let's just say you your car takes a takes a it goes bad and you need to buy a different vehicle and it happens to be a four-wheel drive and you want to go through a wash you can lift it up three and a half inches Wow, that's a huge amount of storage space. Yeah, so on the back, when you have that, the big storage on the front, or on the back, here's your counterweight. Mm -hmm. So that way you can keep your tongue under a reasonable load and you can put as much as you want in here. So you could really load it up if you wanted to. Wow. Right, um, and I see this is the same foam board uh, oops. construction. Right, and so it's all foam, so it's really light. Here's what a lot of people have been playing with online. Regular DC alternator. So DC. this is a Harbor Freight? Absolutely. Harbor Freight Predator. And uh, you've just stri stripped off the housing and built it in. And built well and it's on a it's on a it's on a uh, uh, rubber rubber uh, mounts and everything, so it's vibration isolated. But the cool thing is is that you can since it's running DC you could run it at any RPM. So you can run it darn near at idle and supplement your battery. So like if you're running your AC through the day and you just want to get a little extra charge, you can actually do them both. Mm -hmm. Or you can run it full blast and weld with it. It's up to you because it's connected straight to the, the, the inverter up front mm -hmm. or in back. So, but it's different than your other, um, I mean, I'm not necessarily a fan of uh, generators, but I am a fan of not having to take them to a shop. Right. Because they're so expensive to fix. I mean, and they're so it's like five hundred dollars. This one, if it goes bad, it's just another hundred dollar motor, or, right? Or another alternator to store, and so that makes the the whole camper extremely cheap. Yes, um, and and easy to repair. But the the other interesting thing that I wanted to show you um, is the antenna. Oh yeah, you said that was seventeen foot. Yeah, you just undo that screw, and it's got it's got it's a three slide that goes straight up. Ah. Because I, one of your friends, I was, was, you actually did an interview, was saying that sometimes the line of sight makes a huge difference. It on does. So I was like, well, if you don't get a really good signal, 17 feet, you should be able to get almost 300 miles. So it would tremendously help. I noticed these things. Uh, what are these? These are vortex generators. They're um, everybody's been asking me about them, but they're what you see normally on big trucks. Uh, I found out from the uh, uh, NASA website all the dimensions on building them, but you can buy them. Uh, I put them on there because they're just leftover material. If you're familiar with an arrow, like if you have, when you have an arrow, you put fins on it to, to, to shoot the arrow straight and to go long distances. The, well, the, it does the same thing to the trailer, cars, and everything else. It actually straightens the vehicle up so it tracks straight. But the, the Mini, without them, they was getting about 26. Now I'm getting almost, well, 28, almost 29 on the flats. Coming, coming through here just right out of Flagstaff, the, the, the Mini was saying it was doing 32 at 70. Oh, towing? Yeah. You were getting 32 towing? Well, for one stretch. One for particularly, on well, there's a lot of downhill too. On the flats from. Oh, flats. From, from flat, you know how it comes out, you come out of the mountains here and you go flat? Mm -hmm. From the flats all the way to here, I was getting 32 miles. Again. That's astounding. Do you have a contact information for people to get hold of you? Um, I, I have an email and that's actually it. I, I just started the, the, the business and the name and the, the trailers that I have built, they, they, they disappeared before I can even advertise them. And that's pretty much how it's been going for me right now, and uh, it beats the heck out of being a mechanic. And so, do you want to let people know your G email or not? Um, it's up to your decision. Of um, if you want to contact me, it's uh, superschwin at gmail.com. Uh, superschwin, S-U-P-E-R-S-C-H-W-I-N-N at gmail.com. Okay. And who knows, you might be inundated with uh, emails and people interested in your ideas. Well, I'm, a, I'm always up for helping people. Um, right. I have so many ideas. I, like I said, I really enjoy building things. You know, and there's so many things that I've... And I, it's all just been since I started watching your website. Well, you've got a lot of really creative ideas, and I think people are really going to be helped uh, by all your ideas. And uh, folks, if you got anything out of this uh, video, I hope you like us on YouTube. Subscribe to the channel. And we'll talk to you later.